Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another board game review, where today I'm going to be tackling something that's a little bit of an oddity. It is Havoc, the skirmish game from 1997 by Bluebird Toys, of all things. This is a relic. Like, I could not find information about this game on YouTube at all. This might be the only video about this product on the YouTubes. Back in 1997, there was a giant in the wargaming industry known as Games Workshop. You might have heard of it, you might not have heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, you're probably quite lucky. And a tiny little company in the UK decided to go up against the giant. And it was a toy company. A toy company that made things like Mighty Max, Manta Force, Polly in My Pocket, and Zero Hour. And this little company thought, Yes, yes, I can break into wargaming. We make toys. Toys and war games are the same thing. Let's let's do it. Let's make Havoc the Skirmish Game. So, this is the starter box I received in the Christmas of 1997 at the tender age of 10. Inside the box, you get two robots who are called battle forms. A Four men on one team, four men on the other team, you get the dice, you get the roll sticks, you get some cardboard terrain, you get the roll book, and you get the little card boxes of peeps. Here is the box. Uh, cardboard terrain, nothing to write home about, it really is just the basic bog standard cardboard terrain. I don't even think I'm going to talk about it anymore, because it is, it's, 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 basic and bad like there was no thought or design that went into the cardboard it was literally like someone got their their kid to do a project but the the prize winners you get the nexus battle form look at him and i loved these little things as a kid because like it all came apart like you you would you you, you these were toys these were amazing toys it could take a little bit of damage in my brain and you'd take off a bit of the armor and then it would explode and you'd crack it open look at it boom Oh, I loved it. I loved it as a kid. It really was. It really was something special. In the game, they're rock hard, um, but they just have one life, and if you fail that save, which I think is if you roll a six, they're just dead. So they're, they're, they're a great little toy. They're a great little model, but they are a, a, they're poorly utilised as a war gaming piece. Uh, you get two of those, one for each side. There's the other one. Look at that. Look at that fella. Yeah. This one's slightly better at shooting. I think the other one's slightly better at combat. You can tell by the guns and the fist. You get dice. Uh, dice, the one mechanic in the game that's quite fun is they have exploding dice. So if you roll that explosion, it counts as a hit, and then you roll another hit, which is always pretty damn fun. I won't go too heavy into the way the game works, but the, there's a couple of mechanics that are quite interesting. You, you have your card for your squad, so there's the Darkest Suns squad, for example. Um, and each side rolls a dice, so the Khans roll a dice and the Nexus roll a dice. Whoever has the highest gets to activate a card, and every model of that type, so you might have a hundred of them, doubtful because it's bloody hard to find even twenty, but you might have a hundred of them in five squads of, you know, oh, you might have twenty of them in five squads of uh, four people each, or four squads of five, who knows. You activate all those squads. Uh, they move one space, they have two dice each to shoot, so five of them shoot, that's ten dice. Combat. Psychic is basically shooting again. Strength and armor is something I'll explain right now. You shoot, you aim, so however many hits, you divide that by the enemy's strength, so you get six hits, say their strength's two, that's three hits in total. The enemy would then take three saves on their armor, which is a one or a two to live, anything else to die. That's literally it. But the great thing is, you've activated that card, you, ah, oh, I am so bad at things, sorry. Incompetent. You flip it over, you can't activate it until everything else is activated, but if you get attacked, you've got your stats for being attacked. So, they are pretty good. Um, everything has points values as well. So the, the cards are nice because it's kind of an I go, you go. It's a, if you get really good and you roll lots of sixes to, to activate, you get to activate all your army before the enemy, but then you might be in a poor position, so you might not want to act. Just as a comparison piece, I will show you the battle form versus the Darkest Sun. So as you can see, the battle form has got six dice, so more of these fellas would get more shots. Its strength is six, so you need to get six hits before it even takes an armor save. And then its armor value is a five, so the only dice that would kill that is a roll of a six. So these are quite hard to kill, but then if you get unlucky and roll that six, you've lost a big chunk of your army and your points value. So that's the 
basics of the game, but but I wouldn't be me if I hadn't have gone out on the Ebays and found as much as I possibly could over the years. So I'm just going to show you a bit of them, go through them a little bit, and then we'll wrap up with the conclusion. So in the green corner, we have the Nexus Rebellion. These guys are rebelling against the Khan Empire, who have basically taken over. The Khan Empire are basically, you know, almost like in 40k, they're like the Emperor. They're all the, the bad guys who dominate everything. And these guys are like, I'm sick of being dominated. Don't, don't dominate me. So these are the figures I've collected over the, the years. You've got, obviously, the battle forms, which are the big, big, tough Root and Tootin' fellas. You've got some Nexus Kinsmen there. They're good. They're just like, uh, like veteran-y type soldiers. You've got your basic Nexus Troopers who are... I love them! I love them because they remind me of Starship Troopers! Who doesn't remember Starship Troopers? Look at them! Look at those beautiful figures. Yeah, they're terrible in the game though. They've got like one life and armor save of six. Obviously a big clump of 42nd, 7th line who are again just slightly veteran troopers. They're pretty decent. Uh, quite a lot of them as well because obviously I've bought more than one star set over the years. You got your your Battle Form Warriors, they're stupid good. You got some Doom Guard whose entire right in the law is literally to go and fight these things in close combat and beat them, so okay. You've also got your Tribunes and they're like super veterans if you've survived for how many decades. They're not particularly good but they're pretty tough. And you've got some Brotherhood who do psychic powers. So that's the Nexus Rebellion. There are obviously units I don't have for the Nexus Rebellion because Jesus Christ, this game's hard to find. Particularly units that have always been a bit sad that I've never had is that they, they had tanks. I want a tank. I want a tank. And um, another one they kind of had which I quite like the look of was a uh, heavy weapon dudes. Look, look, look at those assault dudes with the heavy weapons. But we never, we never got to, to have those, which has always been a bit sad. I've always looked at the back of the uh, instruction booklet and gone, Oh, I want those tanks. Look at those. You've got the maulers there as well. Oh, I want them. I never, ever got that much, though. But yes, the, those are the Nexus Rebellion. You dirty, dirty traitors. And here are the Khan Empire. These are, again, like I said, the main empire peeps who are doing all the the attacking and conquering of the galaxies and whatnot. They, they've they got quite a lot of mercenaries and things in their warband, in their forces, warbands, forces. Who cares? Either. I love the box art, though. I do love the box art. Uh, yeah, I've, I've only got three of these battle forms. I've got a big old clump of Darkest Sons, because, obviously. I've got some Khan Troopers. These are, like, twice as tough as the Nexus Troopers, but nothing to write home about. Got some clan warriors who, yeah, they really suck, but they've got mild buffing combat, like mild. Got some Sunkai who are super tough, and some battle form warriors. I don't actually have equal size points armies, which is why I normally chuck in every single one of my. Um, I'll talk about these in a minute. These guys in this army, and then they they kind of balance out points wise, roughly. But yeah, these guys are. Units I never got to have, which I regret bitterly, is they have a freaking helicopter. They have a freaking helicopter in their in their unit. I don't want a helicopter, and it comes with like rocket troopers that blow up, so that's good. And they have some mercenaries, which are pretty sexy, and they can jump really fast, which again I never got to have. And obviously the obligatory psychic unit that gets to do psychic powers. Uh, didn't really care for them. So yeah, the the uh, Khan Empire. Quite neither rare, these are unknown, unseen, but the Khan Empire. And finally, in the light green corner, we have these guys are known as the Pretivor or Pretivor. I'll zoom in on the name. They're their names. Uh, these are razors. They're pretty good at combat, that's as you can probably tell, and they don't shoot, as you can probably tell, because I mean, how could you pull a trigger when that's your arm? Could you pull the trigger? I don't think I could. I loved these as a kid, these things. I just played games with my Nexus troopers running around in the dark, getting picked off one by one by these guys, reminding me of the movies I shouldn't have watched at the time, like Aliens and Starship Troopers. Yes, I was 10 when I watched Starship Troopers. Actually, I was probably younger. But this army never really got realised in the lore. They were like an 
out external force that was coming in and going to get big and going to hurt everyone. But they only ever made three units for them. They made some dogs. Um, again, just good in combat. The bulk of the ones you'll find are the Razors, which are the bog standard troops, and they're really good in combat too. And then they made Screamers, which are, they can shoot and do psychic stuff. But they never released the models, I don't think. So these are, if you've got some of these, they're proper rare. History lesson on Bluebird Miniatures, 1997. This thing came out at the wrong time, wasn't marketed, no one could find it, no one really knew it existed. I remember finding some packs in like Argos and in like a toy store by the seafront of all things. It basically fell under the wayside, didn't do very well, and shortly after the company kind of went bust. Uh, Bluebird Toys got bought out by Mattel, I believe, and the game disappeared. There is actually a bunch of cards for some of the characters and units in the game. The units never got released. The, the, the game disappeared, it faded away, and I think by 1998 you couldn't find it. So unless you were kind of about 10 in 97 and into toys and miniatures, and because it was really that toy miniature barrier, you would not have seen this game. It is a bit too young for any wargaming Warhammer enthusiasts. And it's a bit too old for like an eight year old who likes toys. So Havoc really wasn't sold to the right group and it really wasn't thought out like who would want this thing. So as you can tell by my just general conversation, I don't really know what to make of this one. I think there's a huge part of my childhood nostalgia that just adores it. I just, I love it. I do see it as my childhood toy alongside like an okay war game. It's very quick, it's pick up and play, it's very easy. And there's one beautiful thing about Havoc that cracked on and became really popular years later. It is the pre-painted, the pre-painted miniature. These guys are painted, these guys come ready-made. Your entire build process is put it on the base. Same goes for the, 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 the robots, the, and I guess the tanks and things, the toys I never got to play with, but you, you snap it together and you, you've got it and it's a toy. It's a toy as well as a war game, as well as a miniature, as well as a model. And it became really popular. There's this game you might have heard of called Star Wars. The, the Star Wars, the, the ships with the Star Wars Armada and the Star Wars Battle for it. Like, the Star Wars ships in space game. The name, I forget, who cares. Pre-painted miniatures. Really popular game. Pre-painted miniatures, 997, also toys, really unpopular game. Who knew? You can find it on the Ebays, it's a starter set for like a tenner. Uh, they don't go up often, but when they do, they're, they're worth a look. As you can see, I've got a couple on me. It's If it's something you remember, it's something worth hunting down and investing in. If it's something you don't remember, maybe give it a miss. But, Havoc! The skirmish game that went up against Warhammer and failed miserably. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. It helps. It really does. Share it with people if you know people. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.